Good evening. We're on August uh, 1955 and we start with a really nice Playboy front cover. This one's pretty impressive. Um, not sure who drew this one, but um, I really like the cover. Um, very intricate and it actually links to uh, the centerfolds that we have uh, this month as well in the magazine, uh, which is nice. So we start again with the playboy logo coming through and we have this little introduction here on the playbill and this is about one of the stories that features in the magazine this month and it explains how the story was initially um bought by another magazine but subsequently not published uh, because it was deemed to be controversial and playboy actually took it up and, and printed it and we'll get to that story uh, in a in a while um but it's uh a short but pretty good story uh, i haven't heard of it before um so always nice to come across something a bit different a bit controversial we like those kind of things that's what we're here for and it's called the crooked man and it's about a dystopian future where people who are seen as heterosexual are actually considered to be gay so a man and a woman is something that's kind of in a, in a relationship is actually frowned upon and it's all um it seems to be men on men women are kind of pushed out and there's all the babies are born with um artificial insemination all the people who are um couples have been pushed underground and they're being hunted by this government i mean we've got a really nice um colorful cover to go with it again i'm not sure uh, it's illustrated by uh, this general uh, gentleman here leroy and neiman so um really nice colorful start to the magazine a good story worth a read it's only short so you can probably pick this up online uh, so it's called The Crooked Man by Charles Beaumont, who wrote a story previously in uh, Playboy magazine. So a good start. Um, nice little story. We have this new jazz audience, which is about how jazz is becoming more popular. It, they're touring sort of universities and colleges and various towns. Um, and it talks about how jazz is like a symbol of freedom, a symbol of expression, um, and how it's kind of still frowned upon as not a proper you know a proper musical art form but explains how it came from the deep south where there was lots of pain and problems and social issues and everything else and not to mention all the slavery and all that kind of thing that uh, had existed and obviously still the social issues going on all the um civil disturbances and civil rights so it's, it's interesting to show how playboy is coming through and more and more young people are beginning to read uh, listen to jazz um obviously Today we don't think anything of it, it's just jazz, but back then it was something quite new, quite lively, and it went against the grain. So again, it continues that tradition of Playboy magazine promoting uh, jazz music. A uh, little cartoon here, uh, I think stands out, just Playboy number, uh, paint by numbers, not Playboy by numbers. Uh, again, some nice cartoons. It's quite a feature-packed issue, this one. There's a lot in it. Uh, page count has definitely gone up, um, so we see a lot more. Uh, this is my date with a nighty model and this is just a, a short article about a gentleman who uh, meets a lady who works in a, a lingerie store in a department store and she talks about how a lot of the men that come in are browsing, buying uh, lingerie and night dresses for their mistresses that they meet um, or just people they've met while they've been working away in New York. So it's, again, it's got that kind of side where it's uh, sort of highlighting that women... Uh, also enjoy sex and want to have these kind of affairs and that kind of thing. Really nice um, drawing here as well. This is it's, it's strange. It's you can see it's a uh, obviously a painting of some kind, but it's almost photographic in some parts of the shading when you catch it all together. I really like it. Really nice. Uncle Fred flits by. Uh, this is a story by P.G. Roadhouse. Um, again, he's featured in one previous issue. So this is a, a story about um, this kind of uncle who is uh, quite mischievous gets up to various things and in this particular story he uh, is out in the rain with his uh, nephew and they uh, ring the doorbell or he does the uncle does and they manage to get into the house and then other people turn up and they have to keep making up new excuses to the people who come in changing their stories so again a little um sort of humorous piece nice jack cole colored uh, drawing here uh, he wants to make you make an honest woman of me. He asked me to return the mink coat. So again, this is about um, kind of mistresses and a man having more than one woman. Um, it goes along those lines, and that's 
it's featured, you know, heavily. You've seen all of these in the previous magazines. Thomas Mario talks about onions, and it's just about how um, some people choose not to eat them because they think that um, it's going to ruin their breath if they're going out on a date for the night and how other foods that you may choose over an onion soup or something like that is actually flavored with onion and garlic and probably more potent than actually what you're eating explains you know kind of how they should be cooked and where they come from what sort of family they're from in terms of plants that kind of thing so pretty straightforward from what you've seen previously don't hate yourself in the morning and this is a, a short article about um, it is about men, but it's more almost about women. So it says to men, don't be um, feeling bad in the morning if you've had a one-night stand with a woman and you feel like you've coerced her or seduced her or done something that you shouldn't. And basically what he's saying is that the women who you're probably sleeping with want to do it. It's not something that you are forcing them to do. It's something they want to do. And it cites all different research papers, which, you know, back then the research was probably not as in-depth as it is now. But still, it's still valid in, in certain parts. And like I say, it goes through talking about that kind of thing. Another Reborn Classic, which is, again, a straightforward story, which I won't go into in this one because we've got a few other bits in here we can talk about. Sex in Business. Um, and this is the satire, which you've seen, always about um, funny things in the workplace. So things that go on, things you can do, how you can meet a, a playmate or something like that within the business. Uh, more nice cartoons. Pie jokes has changed its format a little bit, but um, the same thing. And Playboy's Playmate of the Month is quite a simple photo, so not even real nudity, just a kind of almost seductive pose. And um, yeah, it's just a just a nice photo. And then we move on to um, Club Comic, and it's just another. Uh, short story here which again which I won't go into it's uh, not something it's easy to explain within a short video so I'll leave that one for you to read obviously you can pause and read it if you want to or best thing to do is to subscribe to playboy.com um, and you can get all of the uh, PDF issues um, once you subscribe another Jack Cole drawing here and you can see the hand shadow going up here classic Jack Cole style always something hidden in the background or a, a different meaning Clink, little Playboy quiz with some more of these uh, engravings, uh, woodcuts. Um, again, they featured for a number of issues now. And then we have uh, Gowland's Cool Pool. And this is a, a photographer who's photographed this lady underwater, which you'll see in a minute. And that links to the front page with the uh, the mermaid image and the, the rabbit swimming underwater with these snorkel on and everything else. And so this is probably quite different for the time um, and this lady is actually featured in um, Playboy before not as a, a play playmate or a centerfold but as a um, she was in an advert selling the shirts if you remember so this is her photo shoot here so we have some nudity but a really weird color tone to these photos obviously that bluish color so as we go through there's quite a lot of pictorials in this one I think we have like five pages maybe six And more cartoons, so a lot more in this one than we've had in previous page count is definitely up. And then we're on to Playboy Bazaar, which is, again, similar items, things that you probably wouldn't buy now, but things that were quite fashionable at the time. And then we're on to the final part. And next month it says you'll enjoy a bigger, brighter Playboy. There'll be more pages, more color, more stories, more pictures. More of all those choice, unique, distinctive elements that have made Playboy the country's most refreshing entertainment magazine for men. So we start to see the page count increase. And I was actually looking through one the other day. These magazines are between 50 and 65 pages. And as you get to like the 80s, they got to like 150. So I'm going to have to cut those down quite a lot. But most of it is uh, advertising. There's, there's far more uh, in those magazines in the 80s and 90s than you'll see in these. So I'll leave this one there and I'll be reading the next one and I'll catch up with you tomorrow.